ok. So, welcome back to today's lecture. We were discussing polarization transfer where we started to discuss steady state and transient NOE. So, we will continue from there. So, now what previously we have looked at what is the origin of NOE and uh, what is the physical principle behind NOE that is nuclear relaxation. So, how it is done? So, what we are doing? We have a two signal which which are somehow coupled through space and we saturate one signal. So, by saturation what we mean by we equalize the population across the transition by irradiating with uh, a weak field. So, that means there are two labels here and we saturate we apply a weak RF pulse here and now this is equalizing the population between these two states. And then while we are observing what is happening to other signal. So, that is what is NOE, two coupled system, one is perturbed and perturbed means equalize the population between these two, uh, these two states of these uh, signal and then we look at the effect of that perturbation on other signal. So, what we are observing what is happening on other signal. So, NOE is a manifestation of the attempt of the system to come back to the equilibrium. So, that means how it comes come back to equilibrium. So, because of perturbation the population equalizes and then what is happening actually it is trying to come back by some mechanism called relaxation. So, relaxation is trying to equalize that uh, sorry uh, restore the equilibrium and in attempt to store that there is a signal enhancement that is given by a eta, eta that is a NOE signal. So, that is the signal because of perturbation minus the original signal divided by I0 is the original signal that is called NOE enhancement. So, essentially NOE is manifestation of the attempt of the system to come back to the equilibrium and that is given by these symbols where I is the signal obtained um, because of this perturbation minus I0 is original signal that is the ratio that is given as a NOE enhancement. So, next what we looked at the two kind of NOE one was a steady state NOE and another was transient NOE. We looked at what is the difference between a steady state and transient NOE and then we looked at the positive NOE and negative NOE. In some case you get a positive enhancement, some case you get a negative enhancement. So, we looked at that. So, here we looked at there are 4 states of 2 spins. So, here there are 2 spin say spin i and spin s and uh, we can notify this as alpha alpha state, alpha beta state, beta alpha state and beta beta state. So, two transitions belongs to I this and this and two transition belongs to S this and this. Now, that is what transition we have written. So, actually if we perturb one of this spin either S or I because of perturbation the population equalizes and then we are looking at how by different relaxation mechanism it is coming back and what is the effect of that uh, relaxation on the other spin. So, we looked at positive and NO, uh, negative NOE and we have seen that actually this double transition and this uh, zero transition probability actually that plays important role in giving the NOE enhancement. So, the ratio of this with the um, omega 0, omega 1 and omega 2 is given as a NOE enhancement and then depending upon what kind of NOE signal we, uh, we, we get that will be enhancement for that. So, we have seen for generally for uh, small molecule it is positive NOE and for large molecule it is negative NOE and we have also looked what is the region. So, for positive NOE it is omega 2 which majorly contributes and for negative NOE omega 0 that uh, majorly contributes. So, we had done rigorous analysis of population distribution and uh, we have looked at the effect of the relaxation when it equalizes the population and we have developed an master equation to explain the perturbation in the population. So, up to here we have seen in the previous class. Now, we go back and do little more rigorous uh, analysis 
to explain the steady state on a NOE. So, let us see for a steady state NOE uh, what we are doing we are looking at the spin x on spin x what is the effect to irradiation of spin A. So, we are irradiating say spin A and looking at the effect of that irradiation on a spin x. So, like m a can be uh, 0 and we are looking at how m x is changing with time to 0. So, we put that in master equation and what we can get the change of population of x spin with time will be given by rho and sigma. So, m x m 0 so that is population of x magnetization of x spin and this is initial magnetization of x spin. So, this is one rate and there is another rate here. So, this is called auto relaxation rate and this is called cross relaxation rate. So, cross relaxation rate is happening because A and X spin are correlated. So, in that case if you do the analysis we get an enhancement of NOE uh, of X that will be given by MX magnetization of X at any time t minus magnetization of x at time 0 divided by magnetization of x at time 0. So, we can do the simple algebra to get this relation which will which will give the magnetization of A at time 0 divided by magnetization of x at time 0 and ratio of these two rates uh, the sigma A x divided by rho x. So, that is a kind of a steady state enhancement we are getting and uh, that we have seen earlier. So, why this is happening because both spins are actually dipole and there is a dipole dipole interaction because though both spins are connected by the dipolar interaction in space. So, suppose this is x a spin and x spin they are both are dipole and connected by dipolar interaction. So, that is causing relaxation. So, when the it causes relaxation there is a auto relaxation rate and there is a cross relaxation rate and that can be calculated by measuring the transition probability that transition probability we have looked in the previous slides. So, that is omega 0, omega 1 and omega 2 if you can calculate this one can find it out what is the omega 0 for this correlation. So, that will be given by k divided by 20. 2 tau c 1 plus omega a that is a frequency of a omega x that is frequency of x and tau c is the correlation time so of this molecule. So, we can give for omega 0 similarly we can have for omega 1 for a omega x for a and that we can uh, get the correlation by doing simple algebraic equation. So, we can get omega a omega x and omega um, 2 that is uh, transition probability for double quantum transition. So, we can get and uh, the k here can be defined as this relation which takes care of the gyromagnetic ratio of A and x and also distance if you look at here distance dependent. So, this interaction or transition probability has important term the separation between these two spin. So, this is R A x. Okay. So, R x is the distance between two spins. So, if you put it we can get the transition probability um, of zero quantum transition, the single quantum transition and double quantum transition and there is a term correlation time. So, if we put everything together, now we know that NOE depends upon rate of molecular motion because the tumbling time tau c is important factor here tau c. So, that is a um, molecular motion. So, now spectral density are actually dependent upon what is the reorientational time. So, if we perturb how much time it takes to reorient itself that is reorientational uh, correlation time tau c that is a relation. So, here is the enhancement factor of NOE NAX and as you can see for a small molecule we have positive NOE and for large molecule as we go we have a negative NOE all the way up to minus 1 and the correlation time is increasing. So, that means for shorter molecule which which has a faster correlation time you have a positive NOE that is 0.5 and for a smaller molecule you have a negative NOE. So, that is a dependence of correlation time with the NOE enhancement factor and for small molecule and larger molecule that is the relation. So, what happens 
in extreme narrowing condition the, for a small molecule uh, this is the case uh, where extreme narrowing condition comes because they can tumble very fast. So, the spectral density becomes equal to the transition probability. Uh, so, we can write it omega 0 omega a that is 0 quantum transition single quantum transition probability of a spin and the double quantum transition probability is in ratio of 2 to 3 to 12 and that if you get it to the algebra so ratio of this cross relaxation rate and then auto relaxation rate one can get it half and that is what we were saying. So, equilibrium magnetization of a spin ma0 and x spin are proportional to individual nuclear spins and their guided magnetic ratio. So, if we put that all the equation, so the magnetization of A is proportional to gamma A which is gyro magnetic ratio similarly this x spin magnetization proportional to gamma x. So, for a half spin system suppose it is a proton proton or proton carbon that is a half spin system what we have is NOE enhancement will be half gamma A by gamma x. Now, if you take this, so for a carbon proton NOE pair the enhancement is 2. Why? Because gamma uh, of proton is 4 times more than the carbon. So, this will be 4 divided by 2 that is 2. For a nitrogen this will be half 10 by 1 that is 5 and for proton proton because both spins are now proton. So, 1 divided by 1 and multiplied with half that is 0 0.5. So, if you look at clearly here for pro proton proton like a small molecules where we are looking the NOE enhancement between two proton we have only 50 percent enhancement. If it is carbon we have two times enhancement if we have nitrogen we have five times enhancement. Okay. So, now this is for fast tumbling molecules, small molecules what happens in the slow motion. So, for a large molecule suppose biological molecule protein the transition probability mostly will be governed by the 0 quantum transition and that is will be given by k by 10 tau c. So, here and um, the first quantum transition is 0, 0 quantum transition is also 0. So, NOE for such system will be given by this relation. So, ultimately it comes gamma A by gamma X. So, now if we are taking the for large molecule two proton pairs. So, this will be 1 by 1. So, that is one enhancement and that is negative and that is what exactly we saw for the large molecule. For large molecule the NOE enhancement in fairly broad correlation time 1 to 100 enhancement is minus 1. So, that means 100 percent enhancement, but it will be negative enhancement. So, for large molecule it is a negative NOE up to 1. So, that is what is for slow motion limit. So, for that is enhancement we get for biological molecules. So, that is steady state NOE. Now, coming back to transient NOE just to refresh your memory what is transient NOE that we have two spins like previously I spin and S spin. We are applying one selective pulse on S spin here which is inverting the population and then we are waiting for some time which is called mixing time then we apply a 90 degree pulse and we detect what is happening after this. So, that is one dimensional experiment and uh, as we discussed this Tm is the mixing time during this spin mixes. So, transfer of magnetization occurs during this mixing time the inverted spin to other spin via dipolar coupling. So, so that is what happening here we have two spins so spin S spin I we are applying a 180 degree pulse and then we are waiting and during this time by dipolar coupling the spin spin mixing is happening. So, we can do the same analysis of change of magnetization of spin with respect to um, uh, time and that will be given by this master equation. So, m is now representing multiple spin in column vector like m1, m2, m3, m, mn and that m i at any i is the difference of the z magnetization of high spin minus the equilibrium magnetization. So, we can write the r is various rates 
the auto relaxation rate and cross relaxation rate. So, if you look at the diagonal element is correlating with self that is auto relaxation rate and then you have a cross relaxation rate. So, so that is the R matrix and then we have a column vector given by M. So, if we take this so solution for any spin magnetization at any time t will be given by e to the power minus r t and equilibrium magnetization m 0. So, for any time t m because we are mixing for time t m the magnetization will be given by this series multiplied with equilibrium magnetization. So, if you do that we consider the short t m. So, then second uh, uh, and higher order term can be neglected. So, we can find an explicit solution which will look like magnetization of any spin at time t will be given by this and then will be equilibrium magnetization for any spin j not equal to i. So, one can give it a simple formula of m i magnetization of any spin at time t will be given by this auto relaxation rate and multiplied with the time T a and summation of cross relaxation rate with T m and m z. So, if you do that one can, can get the contribution of the NOE enhancement and that NOE enhancement at any time T m can be given by this formula. So, we can sum over the time that is there and for selective inversion of say we are doing of on j th spin one can find it out what is the um, what is the NOE enhancement. So, that will be given by say for eta at time t that will be minus 1 by m i 0 minus 2 m j and this is cross correlation rate into time t m. So, if you look at we can simplify this and one can get essentially 2 sigma i j t m. So, it depends upon the t m NOE enhancement at the end we can conclude that it depends upon T m. So, if you have short mixing time the enhancement can be 1 and if you have long mixing time enhancement can be other. So, that means if you keep increasing your NOE can maybe probably increase. So, that is how for short mixing time the transient NOE at spin i is due to inversion of spin j and cross correlation rate between two spins is also linearly dependent upon mixing time that is what I was saying. So, so relaxation rate between two spins is linearly dependent upon mixing time. So, if you increase mixing time the relaxation rate will vary. So, cross relaxation rate is inversely proportional to the inverse power of the internuclear distance. So, what it says here we have two spins and r to the power 6 that we have seen. So, relaxation rate depends upon 1 to the power r 6. So, that is actually very important factor. So, the NOE ability between two spins is distance dependent and that depends upon the dipolar interaction between these two spins and that dependency is 1 divided by r to the power 6. So, if you keep increasing the distance the effect is going to be minimized. So, this transient NOE experiment actually provides the powerful tool for estimate the internuclear distance in coupled spins. So, here suppose these two spins is there how much NOE enhancement that depends upon R. Shorter you have more enhancement, longer you have less enhancement and therefore, looking at the cross peaks coming because of cross relaxation rate if you if you can measure the intensity of that cross peak we can get an estimate of the uh, distance between these two spins. So, actually this is very important and this actually opens a new avenue for measuring the internuclear distance between these two spins and that is what essentially was used to develop an experiment which is called nuclear overhauser effect spectroscopy NOG and this actually opened a, a new avenue in uh, structural biology because we can precisely or maybe up to a great accuracy we can measure the distance between two coupled spin. So, so then what is short mixing time I was saying that here we mentioned for a short mixing time the transient NOE of spin i 
due to inversion of spin j depends upon cross relaxation rate. So, how do we know that what is short and what is long? It is all relative term. So, so short mixing time is essentially it should be much shorter compared to the spin lattice relaxation time of spin j. So, you know spin lattice relaxation tape it is a inversion recovery. If you invert the spin j how much time it takes to come back to equilibrium that is called T1 time or uh, spin lattice relaxation time. So, that the short mixing time has to be less compared to the spin lattice relaxation time and th then this will hold true. Uh, typically uh, what we have is like a for protein suppose relaxation time is uh, spin lattice relaxation time is say 1 second. So, your short mixing time will be few millisecond that will be compared to less. So, therefore, for say small molecules uh, you can have a short mixing time up to few hundred millisecond like 500 millisecond or 800 millisecond. However, protein has relatively short spin lattice relaxation time therefore, mixing time which is used in case of protein is generally 100 millisecond to 200 millisecond or 250 millisecond. For a small organic molecule you can go all the way up to 500 millisecond to 800 millisecond. So, that is a short mixing time that is a relative for this is for protein bio big bio molecule this is for a small organic molecule. these concepts are used in NOGI. So, what I am going to do in next class I will take you these concept of magnetization transfer or polarization transfer uh, how this is going to use as a measure, measurement of distance by few experiment called NOGI and NOGI briefly I will introduce you and then we go to the heteronuclear um, polarization transfer by an, uh, an concept called inept transfer. So, we will continue with this. So, now if you have a, any questions please um, write to us or ask us we will try to solve it. Thank you very much.